the discussion of the 17th chapter. The question is why? Why these three? Yajna, Dhana and Tapas. That is based on a Brihadaranyaka Upanishad mantra. And what does that mantra say? Yajnena, Dhanena, Tapasa, Vividishanti, Brahmanaha, Anashakena. So, the Brahmanas means people who are interested in pursuing the knowledge of Brahman, get ripe for the knowledge, means prepare for the knowledge through practicing of three means. What are they? Yajna. Yajna becomes a karana, a means for purification. Yajna means rituals, worship of all kinds, and dhanena by giving. Usually the two are combined. Because whenever there is a puja or yajna, you are supposed to give. <coughs> you are supposed to give freely. And uh, without giving, the yajna is not seen as successful. Yajnena dhanena tapasa. Through uh, other purificatory religious austerities. And then uh, what? Vividishanti. Vividishanti means what? Veditum. Ichanti, vividishanti. They desire to know. They desire to know. Uh, they desire to know th these, through these three means. So it is almost like uh, Lord uh, Krishna is giving a Vyakhyana, means a lengthy discourse on these three points in the form of the 17th chapter. First we saw that they were briefly mentioned. What is Tamasik Yajna? What is Rajasik Yajna? What is Sattvik Yajna? And all these things. And then Ahara was also mentioned. Ahara means the food that you eat because whatever one eats, one is what one eats. So this is, this is why the food becomes important because the food becomes a means for preparation for this knowledge. So we are in the middle of the food discussion and then the tapas, the dhanam and the yajna will be discussed more in detail which comprises the rest of this chapter. So we saw what is sattvic food in verse number 7. Am I correct? <coughs> yes? Oh, verse 8 that was? Verse 8. Ayus sattva bala rogya sukha priti vivardhanaha rasyaha snigdhaha sthiraha hridhyaha aharaha sattvika priyaha. What do the sattvic people like? Sattvic people like the following foods. Don't expect a list of items from in the area of vegetables <laughs> and what? Proteins. What else? Carbohydrates. What else is left? Fats and then desserts. Don't... <coughs> sweet items. If you want a list like that, then you look up an Ayurvedic cookbook. Okay? That will have all these kinds of lists. It is not the job of the Bhagavad Gita to give a list of what to eat and what not to eat. So what does, the, uh, what does Lord Krishna do? Lord Krishna gives a general idea. The food, the, when you look at, it should make you smile. And who does these kinds of food, when they look at, makes them smile? Sattvika people. This is what the Sattvika people smile at. 
these kinds of foods. Let's see <coughs> what kinds of foods they smile at. Ayuhu means that which contributes to life. not that. <coughs> it is this. <laughs> so, Kimetat? You can keep it in your chair. Clove. Thank you. Yeah, that may be actually a good idea. So, generally we don't eat things sitting here. But this is for the benefit, especially while discussing ahara. <laughs> so, aharaha sattvika priyaha. So, it should contribute to life. That's why we don't eat dead things. Okay? They don't contribute to life. Dead things means we'll see what dead things are. We'll come into uh, in the two verses down. It will come. Then uh, sattva bala. Sattva bala means it should, it should contribute to the strength of the body. Then arogya. It should contribute to the general health and well-being. Sukha means it should be one should it should make one happy. Priti vivardhana. It should increase the uh, pleasure. Then rasyaha, it should be fresh. Snigdhaha, it should be juicy. Sthiraha, it should sustain the body, mind, sense complex. Hridhyaha, it should contribute to one's happiness and lightness of the body. This is the kind of food the Sattvika people love. Then let's look at what the Rajasik people like. Katvam lalavanatyushna Tikshna Ruksha Vidakinaha Tikshna Ruksha Vidakinaha Ahara Raja Seshtaha Ahara Raja Seshtaha Dukha Shoka Maya Pradaha Dukha Shoka Maya Pradaha In the one word, the whole Sentence is one word, the top line. Katva amala lavana ushna tikshna ruksha vidahinaha. But then there is an ati hidden there. Extra points for people to find the ati. Did you find the ati? Yeah? Very good. So, that ati, even though it's in the middle, ati means what? Too much. That too much, ati, even though it's in the middle, should be applied for all these words. In other words, ati katu. And then what else? Ati lavana. And then? Ati ushna. <coughs> ati tikshna. Ati ruksha. Ati vidahinaha. Okay? Ati means too much. So, atikatu means what? Too bitter. Bitter things. And uh, who likes bitter things really? I am only thinking of alcoholic beverages. Those are the only things that are bitter. That people like. And then, uh, ati katu. Then, what else? Next one? Lavana. Salty. Then, next one? Ati ushna. Hot. Hot not tin. Uh, spice, temperature. Some people like hot, 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 hot coffee and tea. Very hot it should be. And then, everybody knows somebody like that? <laughs> so, should be so hot. And in America, they will sue the coffee company, Starbucks and all. They will say that coffee came, I paid for the coffee, I took the, this lady took the coffee. And then what? While drinking it, it she, she accidentally spilled it on her dress. Caused burns on her chest and thighs. So she sued the company, it is too hot. Only in America you can do things like that. 
here they will laugh and send you away <coughs> so ati ushna like not able to comfortably eat it should just really constrict everything that kind of a desire to eat temperature wise hot food and then uh, next one tikshna ati spicy so if you invite such people to your house they before they look at the food they will demand two three green chillies yes and then keep they'll keep it on the side of the plate and then they will uh, eat the chilli once and then whatever you have given once chilli twice what you have given once that's that's how they will uh, do that pungent hot then ruksha ruksha means dry dry things you know rice powder yeah try to put a teaspoon of that in your mouth i can't describe but you everybody knows what sensation it will be that is called ruksha some people like that and vidahinah uh, means as the, this is now uh, not temperature wise but uh, too much masala like uh, Oh no masala dosa is nothing wo to kuch nahi hai that's nothing too much masala like too many spices all at once confusing what did you say biryani biryani yeah whatever yani okay yeah got the idea okay so for weeks after that you can go have whatever you can jao kha so so then so then this uh, so hot and so pungent that as it goes down the throat it causes a burning sensation in the chest and stomach okay so in other words you should have an antacid right next to you as you eat that because it's definitely going to burn and in fact in america there is one what is it called ghost pepper yeah correct ghost pepper and this ghost pepper is seen as the hottest chili alive you won't find anything hot tiny little fellow chota sa hai and then first you eat it you don't feel anything you say oh what's in this after that you just want to jump into a well okay <laughs> even then there is no relief and not to be outdone these people have chilli pepper eating competition with tall cold glasses of milk on the side i haven't seen i have just read about it and so this is all what is that food that rajasik people like then next one <coughs> भोजन ताम सिय एनर्जी food has energy right that's how when you eat the food it get you get energy nourishes the body nourishes the brain nourishes the heart and all the organs yata means bye bye gone that from which the yama has de- departed meaning it's of no use either due to overcooking or due to being kept for a long time gata rasam therefore because it is yata yamam it is what gata rasam rasam means all these things that uh, you know vitamins and proteins and everything as good as not there because if you keep the food constantly it is it is not seen as hygienic and it is not seen as edible either 
in the olden days when fridge was a new item in india still remember all the grandmas and the great aunts called it a leftover box yeah and leftovers are not allowed as this uh, as this verse will tell us and so what would they do if they had to walk let's say the fridge was in the living room and they were coming from the kitchen to the living room orthodox people <coughs> <coughs> they would gather all their sari and everything close to them and sprinkle some water and go around it because this whole thing that what what all it contains is what is mentioned in this verse it's it's not no longer pure and to associate the, with that food itself is papa yatayamam gatarasam puti means putrid putrid means what rotten and uh, some people like that pujya swami ji used to tell a story the first course he ever taught in mumbai in an ashram called sandipani there one brahmachari he would he could not have any roommates why he would bring uh, yogurt curd from the dining hall keep it in his room covered and then <coughs> eat it after 10 days no fridge nothing no fridge at all he would eat it after how many days 10 days the whole room would be just ready to be fumigated i mean that's how it was terrible but nobody could change him he he thought that was extremely nutritious or maybe i don't know what made the yogurt into a science project with all fungi growing out of it so this is puti paryushitam means pari pari pushitam means it has stayed overnight not in the stomach outside the stomach that food which has stayed outside you don't take it see in those days there was no refrigeration all this was not there and then so they used to make a difference between <coughs> raw food and then cooked food the raw food you can keep overnight like the bars of rice and certain things you know like nuts etc these were seen as pure no matter what grains dals in their raw state but once it was cooked it started to go bad very quickly so therefore in hindi we call it what kachcha khana pakka khana so they would make a difference with that so these things that were cooked food should not be eaten the next day unlike the modern times where everybody looks forward to leftovers and everybody makes extra so that the next day there will be leftovers that is not the idea cool then uchhistam uchhistam means jhuta jhuta means what leftover after somebody has eaten you must not eat the only exception is people who are married they can share a plate but other than that you must not eat that's the only exception and mother and child can share a plate that's that's allowed but nobody else <coughs> because naturally there are germs and all these things it's not uh, it's not advised <coughs> amedhyam amedhyam medhyam means sacred fit for offering medhyam amedhyam means unsacred profane profane food food that is not fit for offering to bhagavan if it's not fit for offering to bhagavan it's not fit for you to eat either so uchhistam and amedhyam bo and uh, you know as that poem goes some like it hot some like it cold some like it in the pot 9 days old that is bhojanam tamasa priyam then he goes to the next topic which is the verses 11 <coughs> 12 and then 13 talks about the various uh, various uh, uh, this thing what is that yagnas 
Sattvikayagnya, Rajasika Yagnya, and then Tamasika Yagnya. Let us read. Abhala Kamshi Bhir Yagnya. Vidhidrishtoya Ijyate. Yashtavya me veti manaha. Samadha yasa sattvika. Samadha yasa sattvika. Abhisandha yatu palam. Abhisandha yatu palam. Dambhartham apichaiva yatu. Dambhartham apichaiva yatu. Ijyate bharatash ishtaha. Ijyate bharatash ishtaha. Yagnam Vidhi Rajasam, Yagnam Vidhi Rajasam, Vidhi He Namas Rishtanam, Vidhi He Namas Rishtanam, Mantra He Namadakshinam, Mantra He Namadakshinam, Shraddha Virahitam Yagnam, Shraddha Virahitam Yagnam, Tamasam Parichakshate, Tamasam Parichakshate. Yajna, 11th verse, Vidhidrishtaha yaha ijyate. Yaha ijyate, the one who does the yajna, the one who worships in the form of the yajna. How? Vidhidrishtaha. <coughs> Seen according to how the Shastra recommends. Exactly how the Shastra recommends, exactly in that manner, the person performs. Vidhi drishtaha means according to how it is seen in the Shastra. The vidhi means injunctions. It includes what? Prohibitions also. Do's and don'ts are followed. And then uh, uh, vidhi drishtaha yajnaha yaha ijyate, the one who performs, how? Aphala kankshi bihi. By the one who does not want results from the yajna in the form of kamya karma, <coughs> desired objects. Then what do they want? Antahkarana shuddhi, preparation for knowledge. But even that's a want. Yes, it's a want, but it's a more refined a want than saying, give me money, give me a car, give me this, give me that. So it is a much more refined want because it is <coughs> it is becoming ready to gain moksha purushartha after ignoring or dropping artha kama pursuits. It is getting ready for moksha. So therefore, it is a very good. Uh, uh, it's an extremely good uh, uh, thinking behind. The yajna is done because it is yashtavyam. It should be performed. It is nitya karma. Morning, two oblations, agnihotra. Evening, two oblations, also agnihotra. All these things are there. And so therefore, this is to be done. And if it is to be done, there must be some reason why it is recommended for me to be done. And let me just do it. I don't need a gold star because I have done it today. It's like, Nitya Karma is like that. Just because you get up in the morning, brush your teeth and take a shower, you don't expect a reward, right? <coughs> what reward do you expect? But if you don't do this, then what will happen? Nobody will sit next to you after a few days. That's what will happen. So you don't get the reward, but then if you don't do this, there is some suffering, there is some difficulty. So here also the Nitya Karma must be done. If the Nitya Karma is not done, if I don't do what I have to do, then I will be geared towards doing what? What I cannot, should not be doing. The mind is a workshop of the Asura, Asura's workshop, that which is empty and idle. So therefore, I have to do this and this is this is good for me because the Shruti is Hitam and I am going to do this. 
Aphalakankshi bihi kanksh to want. Aphalakankshi bihi means by the one who does not want the results. Yagnyaha vididrishtaha yaha ijyate. Why yashtavyam iti. Yashtavyam iti means it has to be done. This idea is there. Manas samadhaya. Having pacified the mind. <coughs> pacifying the mind, keeping the mind steady, keeping the mind focused, keeping the mind cheerful. All that is there in Samadhaya, Manas Samadhaya, that is Satsvika. Who does this these days? Hardly anybody. Because there is always, the, the mind is so crowded with all kinds of desires, all kinds of things. So many things are wanted, so many things are needed, and yajna nobody does. In fact, in the 70s, they did a survey of how many Nitya Agnihotris were in India. 70s. That was what? 40 years ago? Yeah. So then, 50 years ago. That time, there were only 398 Agnihotris. And now you can imagine how many there must be, less than half of that probably, or even less than that. So, this is just to encourage a certain kind of a freedom in worship. Because in worship, the will is really free. And there is a joy. There is a joy in preparing for puja. There is a joy in doing yajna. There is a joy in inviting the people, feeding the people, sharing one's wealth with the people. And all that is what? Is not something known to us anymore at all. And so, this is the Satvika Yajna. Then, next one. Abhisandhaya Tuphalam Dambhartham Pichaibayat Ijyate bharata shreshtha Ijyate bharata shreshtha Tam yajnyam vidhi rajasam Tam yajnyam vidhi rajasam So, abhisandhaya tuphalam Abhisandhaya means expecting, desiring, keeping in view. What? Phalam, the result. Dambhartham api chaiva yatu And dambha means with the view to show everybody I am so devout. East or West, I am the best. Look at me. My yajna is better than yours. You invited only 50 people. I am going to invite 100. <coughs> you did only this much. I am going to do this much. You had only a few flowers. I am going to get the whole market to my house. And I'm going to have strings and strings of lights and flowers. It's why? Because just to show that I am a big person. And I need respect. Therefore, I need respect. You had only two, three dishes in your miserable yajna. I am going to have 50 dishes. And so this way, my yajna is better than yours. This is Dambhar. There is a desire to either show off the status that one has or there is a desire to become socially and upwardly mobile. That is also there. How to become upwardly mobile after yajna? Yajna I am doing for religious purposes. How will it give me upward mobility? It definitely will give. Because I will invite the cream of the crop, I will invite celebrities and I will throw the money I have to show how much, you know, fanfare, bling and all these things are there in my yajna. And when I do that, people will think I am a person of substance. And when they invite me to any kind of a event, then they will invite me right in the front. I will get a place to sit right in the front. I will be given 
what gifts i will be given a bouquet i will be given a garland i will be given all the honors this is the idea so abhisandhaya tu phalam dambham anartham so dambha and the, all the mana should be there therefore ijyate tam yagnyam vidhi he bharata shreshtha tam yagnyam vidhi no that yagnyam to be yagnya to be rajasika in nature next one vidhihinam asrishtannam mantrahinam adakshitam shraddha virahitam yagnyam tamasam parichakshate parichakshate is known as tamasa what is known as tamasa mantrahinam mantras are not there the person will say why bother what mantra rudram it's okay it's dispensable why should i say rudram no need to say rudram just say whatever you want and just pour or have pour the ghee however you want light the fire whatever you want i had gone to one such yagna unbeknownst to me it was some kind of a interfaith yagna quote and quote and they said all the people in the world like fire and i didn't know what was going on they just said interfaith yagna you please come and chant some mantras and what not so i went so all the people like the fire the fire is a primal thing in people's life so we are going to light the fire and worship at first i thought this is a very nice thing and they said it is for world solidarity and all these things so the main fellow lit the fire, lit the fire and then what happened was that there was some dirt around that fire pit they had some dirt and they had some left over some pieces of paper scraps every to my horror he swept it all up and put it in the fire <laughs> we don't do that <coughs> because the fire itself is bhagwan and if you are worshiping bhagwan through the fire you can't just put all kinds of whatever you feel like so as though that was horrifying not horrifying enough then then he said i want to gather everybody around everybody come so i had already i kind of stood back because i had already had one experience after seeing what they were doing so i said i'm not going to participate too closely but since i was already there i didn't have much of an option i was standing there little bit far away then they said how how many people are angry of course everybody is angry about something or the other so most of 75 80% of the people raised their hand and then he said scream and put the anger into the fire <laughs> let it be consumed by the fire this may be a very nice uh, psychologically elevating ritual a ritual that has been crafted if that is how it was built i would not have any problem with it that's fine some people want to light a fire and scream at it okay no problem but you can't call it a yagna the the, the 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 word that was used was world yagna interfaith world yagna no, what is the other word for world some other thing interfaith international yagna global yagna so you can't call it yagna and do whatever you want and uh, so afterwards i told him he was very respectful he listened and everything i said just just do he says oh but and he was very honest he said my my whole following is because i do all this i said you do but don't call it yagna i said call it whatever you want call it uh, you know that uh, call it something call it a cathartic uh, purging of emotions or a rehabilitation of anger or whatever you want to call it through fire water and all the elements you do that no problem so do not call it yagna do not call it puja yagna because that's not what it is so that was you know that is what is can be and he was doing it un you know unbeknownst to himself so but really people who do this 
are called what? Tamasik. This is called Tamasika Yajna. Then verses 14, 15, 16 are called, uh, they, are, they, they talk about tapas. The tapas is a big discussion in this chapter. We already saw the tapas how uh, very broadly classified into sattvic, tamasic, rajasic in the beginning. Now the tapas is going to be described in further detail on the basis of two classifications, three classifications. The first classification is physical tapas and then vav tapas and then mental tapas. That is the three classifications. Then after that he is going to go to tamasika tapas, rajasika tapas, sattvika tapas or maybe the other way around. Sattvika comes first always. Do you see the classification? So for, first it is kayika, vachika, manaha, manasam, manasam tapas. That is separate. A separate discussion on what is vajikam, what is kaikam, what is manasam. Kaikam, physical tapas, vajikam, verbal tapas, and then manasam, mental tapas. After discussing this in the next three verse, verses, following the verses, we will talk about rajasik, sattvic, and tamasik tapases. Deva Drija Guru Pragna Deva Drija Guru Pragna Tapujanam Shaucha Marjavam Pujanam Shaucha Marjavam Brahmachar Yamahim Sacha Brahmachar Yamahim Sacha Shari Rantapa Uchyate Shari Rantapa Uchyate Anudvega Karam Vakyam Satyam Priya Vitan Chayat Satyam Priya Vitan Chayat Swadhya Yabhyasanam Chayva Swadhya Yabhyasanam Chayva Vamayanta Pauchyate Vamayanta Pauchyate Manaf Prasadas Saum Yatvam Namatma vinigraha Namatma vinigraha Bhava sam shuddhirit ityetat Bhava sam shuddhirit ityetat Tapo mana sam uchyate Tapo mana sam uchyate Puja is tapas First thing Puja worship of any kind is tapas Puja tapaha pujanam means puja. Pujanam tapaha iti uchyate. Why? Because there is a lot of effort there. It is kayikam tapaha, physical effort. You can't just tell Bhagavan, which is sitting on the altar, what? Hey, and then go away. You know, you can't say hey and go away. Why? Because there is a there is an altar. It requires upkeep, it requires naivedya, it requires tending to. Why? Through that tending, there is a tender relationship with Bhagavan that is forged. Even with the rock. In America, they, you know, especially some, some person made a lot of money. They said, you can't take responsibility because life is too difficult. What do you do? Have a pet rock. Yeah, just the rock. Pick from the side of the street, nicely scrubbed and maybe painted. Put it in a box and sold. Made a lot of money. Pet rock. It is nice. You don't have to feed it, but you forge a relationship with it. And then after that, perhaps you can graduate to a potted plant because a little bit more energy. Thoda pani, little water and fertilizer once in a while you have to give. You are not yet ready to look after a live person or a pet. 
when you graduate to what cat dog puppy kitty and then <coughs> then you are able to get ready to relate to people finally you can get married you can have children you can get relate to the children etc etc and then after that what then back to the children grow up go away and then what one has emptiness syndrome and then what back to pet rock <laughs> we have cut through all this our pet rock is shivalinga gangadhareshwara is our pet rock right from the beginning and so this is this is exactly what what it is shivalinga linga means lingate anena means that through which the whole universe is understood if all the forms in the universe were to be patterned into one form it would be like a shivalinga that's what it stands for it's as close as it comes to the formless and so therefore e- even to forge a relationship there must it must become real if it doesn't become real then it is not puja puja means there must be <coughs> something which is meaningful and real i have a relationship it's not enough to just say yes i have an altar that altar must be tended to there is a that bhagwan sitting on the altar must become alive for me it's not we don't worship idols idols that is idol talk what do we worship bhagwan we worship bhagwan through any form because every form in the world is what bhagwan's form so we can worship bhagwan in any form any name i was once in uh, jaipur with pujya swami ji and there was a lady who said she wanted to bring her small child to be blessed by pujya swami ji and i said please bring she never came after that <coughs> then finally on the last day she came i said did you bring your child yes yes he is sleeping in the other uh, area i will bring him, bring him so i told swami ji she is bringing her child her husband was also there and then she when she came back in there was no child or anything there was just a small box small box tiny box and she just reverentially put it in pujya swami ji's hands and he on his lap then she said please open this is my lalla one baby krishna was lying there and then uh, she said she said to that krishna look at pujya swami ji she told pujya swami ji look at my child here he is and uh, please bless him so that he grows up well and he does all this and then uh, the husband meanwhile was crying uncontrollably i knew some tragedy must have happened um, and swami ji st- asked her how long have you been doing this and she said two and a half years she was not mad two and a half years ago her five year old died in an unfortunate river accident got swept away and she was inconsolable until she made krishna made krishna into her baby she was not mad she was not she knew her child was no more there she knew that it was a conscious transference in fact every puja is a conscious transference without transference there is no puja at all every puja is a conscious transference otherwise how in saligrama we can see vishnu so it is an adhyasa every puja is an adhyasa here too the adhyasa was complete but it was complete in such a way that it was giving the couple a wonderful catharsis to overcome the guilt the hurt the sense the feeling like how to go about life for the rest of the life how to go about life without our baby without our child and so pujya swami ji blessed her and said if this was this is what you have been doing for two and a half years instead of going mad instead of getting into a depression moksha for you is assured you start attending classes immediately it is what he told her it is just amazing so any re- the relationship must be forged just like one has a friend one has a brother one has a sister one has parents one has 
children, spouse, it's the same kind of, it should be as alive and as real. In fact, it, it is in fact more real because all these others are time-bound relationships. Even in the English marriage vow, they say, until death do us part. So therefore, this is, you know, this is a relationship that goes on and on and on. Why? Because there is no difference between the object of the relationship and myself, the subject. It's one and the same. That's why it's a relationship that is limitless because uh, the nature of me is limitless. The nature of the worship Bhagavan is limitless. Just very, very beautiful. And the puja requires a lot of preparation. You know, you can't just suddenly have puja. You need, you need all the things. You need flowers. You need what else? You need uh, diya. You need some prasad. You need uh, incense sticks. All the things have to be gathered. Suddenly you cannot say, ay, ay, yo, I forgot prasad and then start making it in the middle of the puja. It should all be ready and kept. So therefore, there is a kaikam, vachikam and manasik tapas. But mostly kaikam because after the puja one is tired, after the clean up and everything. So here, what is the puja and what is the object of the puja is given here. Who are to be worshipped? Deva, Devatas and then Dvija. Dvija means Brahmanas, twice born. Brahmanas means those pandits and people who are respected for their knowledge. Uh, not unlettered Brahmanas, but Brahmanas who have made a name for themselves. And then Guru. Guru means teachers, any kind of teachers. Teachers are very much revered, whether they are Pathashala teachers, school teachers, or Veda teachers, uh, any teachers is, uh, is uh, are dance teachers, music teachers, gurus. And then Prabhyaha means person of self-knowledge, wise person <coughs> is worshipped. And then uh, Shaucham, we, we, this we have already seen. Where have we seen? 13th chapter. Some Arthas Puranam finally took place. Very nice. 13th chapter we saw. Arjavam also we have seen. Rijubham, alignment between thought, word and action. Shaucham means cleanliness. What kind of cleanliness? Inner, outer, everything. Yeah. Can't live like a, you know, can't live like a person who has been raised by wolves. Okay. Yeah. So then Shaucham, Arjavam. Then Brahmacharyam. Brahmacharya here means uh, if one is married, it means chastity. And if one is not married, it means you know, celibacy. And uh, uh, if one has taken a vow of celibacy, so celibacy. And uh, what is that? You know, a, a disciplined life. That is what Brahmacharya is. Regardless of one's marital status, it means disciplined life. Ahimsa. Ahimsa means going out of the way to not injure others. And this is called Shariram Tapaha. Sharirika Tapaha. Physical discipline. This is very nice, very easy to do also. And then what is Manasam Tapaha? Manasam Tapaha, as we'll see, it is Anudvega Karam Vakya. Udvega means that which causes affliction, agitation. Anudvega Karam, that which is not the cause of agitation. As soon as you talk, the other person starts to perspire. Then you know, okay, I have caused some kind of a problem. Anudvega karam vakyam. So the sentences, my vakya here is not sentences, speech. My speech should not, as far as possible, cause agitation. More, more about this, we will we'll revisit this shortly. And so in order to not cause agitation, Three other things, two other things are given. What is that? Uh, satyam, three other uh, qualifications. Satyam, Priyam and Hitam. Speech should be Satyam. Satyam means what? Truth. Truth. Satya Bhashana. But it should not be unpalatable truth. Unpalatable truth means what? You look ugly. Yeah, I mean that also cannot be satyam. 
that is one's own, that is my own, if I say that to somebody, that is my own perception. So better, such things are better unsaid. Better to keep quiet than tell somebody any comments like that. So uh, unpalatable truths also could mean a, even if it's an objective judgment about some other person's behavior, you know what? You are very disruptive. That is very difficult for the other person to take. Even if that is true. <coughs> First of all, did that person come to you and ask, am I disruptive? No. Then why am I offering this, uh, this, this uh, free, uh, free advice to them, telling them that they are disruptive? This is something, it is, a, it is more a statement about me rather than the other person. This is something I have to look into. If they come to me for advice, then I have the right to say, okay, you know. But then there is a hundred different ways I can put this. I can ask them, how would you like to be? What is it that's causing you problems? And if supposing they say, I don't know, people seem to be put off by me. And then we should ask them, why do you think people are put off by you? Make them come to that understanding. Make them come to the realization rather than saying, you know what, you are so disruptive. And so this is what is Anudveka Karam Vakyam Satyam Priyam. Put it in a way that is loving. Same thing you can say in a loving way. There has been uh, some recent research done on dementia, Alzheimer's patients. And then they are notorious for creating because brain is affected and they don't think properly and they don't they cannot express what they are feeling they just lash out at people and they don't follow orders if you tell them please go take a shower they'll say why i'm not going to do this just because you said to take a shower i'm not going to do that this becomes a very difficult thing for the caregivers and they will spill their food or throw things at people on purpose because they, they, are, they are not thinking properly. And so they found that if the caregiver got annoyed, naturally, because the care, it's not easy for the caregivers to take care of such a person. The caregivers, the first reaction would be to get annoyed. Hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Then they would do it even more and the caregiver would have taken longer time to pacify them. But what happened was this that they found if the same thing was said with a smile, the patient complied. So instead of saying, I told you to go take a shower, why are you being so difficult? Same words, why are you being so difficult? Don't you think it will be nice to go take a shower? And the person would say yes and go take a shower. So even with people whose brains are damaged, they respond to priyam, hitam, sukham, satyam. What to talk of normal people? That is the idea. So even with even a brain damaged person understands this, understands the uh, understands the uh, difference between somebody getting mad at them and somebody being loving and hitam means they are desiring their best for them. And then what else? Swadhyaya abhyasanam. Swadhyaya abhyasanam means study of one's own Veda. What does that do? It keeps you out of trouble because you are not telling other people that they are being disruptive. That's all. <laughs> keeps you out of circulation, keeps you out of trouble. Some Parana is very good. Just go away, do Vishnu Sahasranama, do something, study something, read something, Lalita Sahasranama, something. Lalita Sahasranama, Vishnu Sahasranama, half an hour. Half an hour you are not bothered by anybody and nobody is bothered by you. Very nice it is. And uh, so, this is what is it, what is it called? Vāṅmayaha tapaha ucchate, verbal tapas. And then, manah, manah prasādaha means a cheerful mind, cheerful mind. And then, uh, saumyatma, coolness, comes from soma, moon, coolness, Gentleness, saumya. Saumyatvam means gentleness. Mental gentleness. And then 
cheerfulness, not being in the doldrums all the time. Ayyo, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, what's going to happen? Whatever is going to happen will happen. No, no, I don't know what's going to happen. Of course you don't know what's going to happen. You're not supposed to know what's going to happen. Why? Why can't I know what's going to happen? So that you can sit and worry about it. That's all. No other reason. You don't know what's going to happen. It's not in your hands to know what is to happen. So half the life is gone anticipating the future and the other half the life is gone regretting the past. And the poor present, present tense, has no takers. That's why it's called tense. The present becomes tense because the past and the future are totally lived in. One is keeping on uh, worrying about the future or one is revisiting the past. Why didn't I do the right thing? Why did I do the wrong thing? Kimaham sadhu na karavam, kimaham papam karavam iti. Why did I do the wrong thing? Why didn't I do the right thing? Ah. Whole life becomes worry about the future and regret about the past. And so, manaf prasadha saumyatvam gentleness in the expression maunam. Maunam means, you know, there is, there is vaktapas, meaning there is not a compulsion to talk. Compulsion to talk is not there. How to get to this place? First, you know, so it is whether it's a question of quality or quantity of words, it is actually both. Because it is quality, see, quality is important, but first we look at the quantity. How much am I talking? How to know how much am I talking? Make a sankalpa. What is the sankalpa? I will only talk if there are people to listen to me. When you make this vow, the effects will be startling. Yeah, you try it. You try it and see. And then you talk for two minutes. Next thing, you talk for two minutes and then see what the other person is doing. And then if the other person is just looking at their watch and getting ready to push off from there, let them push off. That is the idea. And uh, so first there is quantity control. Then there is quality control. The quality control is already given. Saumyatvam, manap prasadha, all these things. And maunam means there is no compulsion to talk. Talking, I'm okay. Not talking also, I am all right. That should be the idea. Maunam. And then what else? Another one which we know, Atma Vinigraha, mental discipline, mastery. Mental mastery. And then, Bhava Samshuddhihi, the intent to speak is what? cleaned up. The intention is clean. There is no ulterior motive to put somebody down or to put myself on top. That is not there. The intent to speak is cleaned off of its motive. Bhava samshuddhihi. What is that? Vangmaya. What is that? No. Manaf tapaha. Malasam tapaha iti uchyate. Then there is the, uh, then there is the, uh, now the next three verses are going to talk about Sattvika, Rajasika and Tamasa, what? Tapas, in general. This was a different uh, classification, physical, verbal, mental. Now the same Tapas is going to be looked at from the standpoint of Sattvik, Rajasik, Shraddhaya paraya taptam Shraddhaya paraya taptam Tapas tatri vidham naraihi Tapas tatri vidham naraihi Abhala kamkshi bhir yuktaihi Abhala kamkshi bhir yuktaihi Sattvikam parichakshate Sattvikam parichakshate Trividham tapaha. 
Trividham tapaha means these threefold tapas that we talked about. What was what did we talk about? Physical, mental, and then verbal. This th threefold tapas, shraddhaya paraya, uh, observed with utmost complete and total shraddha, with total shraddha, and then uh, by the people, and then not having any results. Aphala kamkshibihi yuktaihi. Yuktaihi means with composure, with, with a certain composure. Composure, what is the definition of composure? That was given in the sixth chapter. Yuktahara viharascha, yukta cheshtascha karmasu, yukta svapna avabhodhascha, yogo bhavati dukkaha. In the sixth chapter it was given. The definition of uh, yukta. Yukta means person who is together. How do you become kind of together? You are not falling apart everywhere all the time. By eating properly and the right amount, by sleeping properly and the right uh, amount, and, uh, and then by doing what is to be done in the proper way. Uh, you grow up spiritually, you grow up mentally, emotionally, and that person of composure is called yukta. And that yukta now is described as the one who has sattvika tapas. More we will see at what time? 6.30. If there are any questions also, I will answer. Thank you for the clothes that really helped. Om Purnamada Purnamida Purna Purnamada Chari Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Yonamaha Hari Om